Hi everybody, I'm back. Hey, if you skip through anything in the video, feel free, but make sure you catch my final thoughts at the end of this video on what I actually think about the Acmer laser. Hi everybody, my name is Ryan and I am the Laser Noob and today we are going to be testing the 33 watt P2 laser engraver by Acmer. Now, Acmer claims that this is a one minute setup. So one of the things we are going to do first is we are going to get this thing unboxed and as soon as I have it unboxed, I'm gonna set my phone out with my stopwatch on it. We're gonna start it and I'm gonna put this thing together and we're gonna see exactly how long it takes to set this thing up. But before we do that, the first thing that, that caught my eye when this thing first showed up at the house after I got it um, is the fact that it, it doesn't come in just a plain brown box. The, I actually felt like I was I was going to a store or something. And this is the first laser company that I have seen that actually does this on on their shipping boxes. And I mean, if, I would expect this if I was if I was going to Walmart and pulling something off the shelf. But it comes in a really nice outside packaging. I thought that was kind of different, kind of nice. You know, it's not necessary, but it is still kind of neat. Has all the specifications on the side, US or EU plug, what the voltage is or what the wattage is. And, and then all the stuff it can do, we're supposed to be able to do, but we're gonna put that to a test. But first, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video, we're gonna get this thing unboxed, and we're gonna test that one minute setup time. Stick around. Okay, so we have everything we're going to need except for one thing. Now, I mentioned this when I was taking everything out of the box, and I said I noticed that there were some keys. There is a set of keys that come in that box. Yeah, right there. All right. Now, what you're going to notice right here in between the flame detection light, our power switch, is a little keyway that this key is going to go in. So one of the neat things that I like about this is that, you know, I've got a grandson. Um, I, I plan on having him in the shop a lot. I mean, he's not even a year old yet, but years down the road, you know, he's going to be in here with me. Um, but I, I can turn this thing off. I can take the key out and go. And you can't turn this thing on without having that key to turn it back on. Okay. So we do need that. So we have our air assist, we have our laser module, we have our power supply, we have our power cord, we have our stopwatch, okay? So we're gonna do all of this. I, I think that they intend the one minute setup is just getting the power on, the laser module installed, everything plugged in. I don't think they're probably including the air assist, but we're gonna go ahead and time it with the air assist as well. We're gonna do it all. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing started. First thing we're going to do is take our laser module out, lay that off to the side. That's going to go in the back. We're going to turn that knob, tighten that. We have our power supply cord here, and we have our power supply itself. We're going to take the power supply. We're going to set that right over here on the side. This gets plugged in right here next to the HDMI cable, or not the HDMI, the, the, the cable to go to the, to the computer. Now, we're going to plug this in. We're going to come over here. We're going to take our air assist hose. We're going to plug that in. 
we're going to take our laser plug. We're going to plug that in. Those wires are nice and thick. I like that. We're going to plug this in for our air assist. We're going to plug the air assist in. We're going to turn it on. And boom. So it took exactly one minute and three seconds, um, almost one minute and four seconds. And that includes putting the air assist on there. So they weren't lying. I mean, they said a minute. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to hold them for three seconds. And uh, I'm old and blind, and I got it taken care of. So I think everybody should be able to do that. Now, we are all ready to go with this. I'm going to get this thing all hooked up with light burn and then we are going to run some test materials through this and we're going to see what we can make with this. Okay, so after doing the assembly in about a minute on the Acmer laser, it took us a minute and three seconds and Acmer says under a minute. I don't think they're including the amount of time it takes to hook up the air assist. I think that's just the laser. So we did it in a minute and three seconds, including the air assist, which is not bad. I'm gonna call that a win no matter what, straight out of the box. That's pretty awesome. So after that, we spent the next couple of days doing Doing some testing on the laser. One of the nice things that ACMR does is they give you a little info sheet right here that will tell you all the different materials and it tells you the line interval, it tells you the speed, and tells you the percentage power that you need to have set up on your laser to engrave certain things like basswood, leather, craft paper, MDF, carton, stainless steel, anodized aluminum. All that is all on here, not only engraving, but cutting as well. So we took their settings and tried to do some stuff. So let's see how that all turned out. Okay, so now you've seen all the stuff they want me to tell you that this laser can do. Now let me tell you about some of the issues that I had with this laser, the ACMR P2 33 watt. Um, number one, they have two different versions. One is non-assembled, one is pre-assembled. All you have to do is what I did in the video earlier, put the head on and the, power, the laser module, hook up the air assist, and, and plug it in. 
okay? Um, I don't know who they got putting these things together, but it wasn't put together very well. I had to make a ton of adjustments to it. Um, one of the things that I do not like about this laser, at least the pre-assembled model, um, is that the rollers for the belt, where the belt tensioners are, um, it's got a very, very tiny set screw that, that pushes the wheel back and, and tightens that belt. Um, those, when you tighten them how they're supposed to be tightened, they don't really roll, okay? Which makes it really hard, that laser, you can't, I mean, a normal laser, you should be able to take one finger and move it, move it, the gantry back and forth. This laser, I mean, you can push on it, the whole damn laser will move. Um, I loosened those up until it got a little bit better where you could just slide it and the laser, the whole laser wouldn't move. But then those things would twist, they'd be at an angle, and then the belts would want to fall off. So that's that's a downside for me right there. Um, I do like that it has the flame, you know, uh, sensor that you can turn on and off. So I, I see some of these other people will be like, man, my flame sensor keeps going off. This, you can actually turn it off or on. Um, so, I mean, if you do get some flames or something or, or a fault signal and you're sitting here, you don't have to worry about it going off and stopping your project. I like that. I do like that it has the, the tilt sensor on it. Um, I like that it has the built-in air assist. One of the things I thought was really cool when I first put this laser together and got it set up with light burn is that, um, you know, in light burn, when you look at your at your speed power settings for each layer, it also has a little a little box or a little a little tick mark where you can turn the air assist on off. Now, on most lasers, that doesn't do a darn thing, but this laser actually this air assist actually plugs into the laser. That's where it gets its power from. So, I really thought it was cool that. I could turn the air assist on or off on certain layers, and when it hit that layer, the air assist would go either off or on like I had it set. So I don't have to remember to turn it on because I forget that a lot for some reason. Um, that worked for about five times, and then it just stays on. So if you want it to turn off, you actually have to unplug it. There's no actual other off switch. So that was a downside. Um, it comes with these conical shaped legs on it. So there, there's, there's no real great way or, or easy way to, you know, make some leg extensions or anything like that to raise it up. It kind of is what it is. I mean, I can 3D print something like I did with the Wizmaker. Um, Wizmaker was easy, it was nice and round, and, and I'm a simple guy, I don't know much about the 3D printing, but it, it wasn't too hard. These ones are conical, and it's a pain in the butt. Um, all the wires, everything all came pre-zip tied with this, because this was the pre-assembled model, which is $100 more. Um, but I just, I don't, it's, they're, they're the first ones that say they have the industrial rails. Um, I don't really like them. They're not real smooth. Um, the wheels on, on the, the X1, the Wizmaker, the Atom Stack all work a lot better than these industrial rails that, you know, they're the first ones to come out with. They're, they're not all that great. Um, yeah, I mean, I've told you guys in the past, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna, they were gonna pay me to do this, my normal rate, um, but uh, I'm not gonna take their money. I, I've told you guys that if a laser is, I don't like a laser, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Um, they can keep their, their cash and there you go. I mean, if you want it, you can get it. Um, the pre-assembled thing's nice. Maybe I just got a bad one, but uh, I won't be promoting ACMR. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you learned something. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Oh yeah, wait, 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 stop. Subscribe, like, do both of those. Thanks guys, have a great weekend.